So the internet has been buzzing with our management system tier list. We've got tens of thousands of views on this video and many, many comments from various different people. So I decided to come back to Mischief Motorsport and find out exactly what Herman thought of all your comments. All I see posted on the net after our last thing is the, the guys are posting there, yeah, do you want a tater or a tronics or a or something. I don't know, you're going to have to peep, peep this. We're going to do a deep dive and find out from the man himself exactly what makes a tier 1 ECU. And was our tier 1 list accurate? Actually, it wasn't, it wasn't my list, it was his list. So, Herman, now that you're done climbing out from under the bus that I threw you, yeah. <laughs> you're on your own, the stage is yours. Where do we start though? Okay, firstly, I, I, I don't believe there's any tier in the ECU. The tier list came from you for tires or rims <laughs> or something. So I, I go back to my original of, there is a list of all ECUs depending on what you need, what you want. Going back to the car analogy, where do you want to go with it? Who's the car for? Do you want it four by four, whatever. The point is there's a place for all ECUs. Having said that, I don't agree with it. I do agree with it. Do I believe that any of the ECUs uh, need to move out of their tiers? No. What are the tier one ECUs and do they all belong in tier one? My thing was these ECUs belong in this company, if you want to call it that, tier one. They don't belong in tier two. The big hit out and arguments are some of the guys saying, but we are not this one. We are not that one. We are not that one. And I'm saying, I never said you were that one or you were this one or you were that one. They've all got different feature sets. But from a tier one to a tier two, there is a massive jump. And that jump is flex fuel. None of the ECUs that I mentioned in the bottom list have flex fuel. Whether you think flex fuel works or not, Irrelevant, it's a, it's a feature set. None of them have knock control. None of them have CAN bus. So if you want an ECU to talk to an 8HP gearbox and run the gearbox, if you want to take a 335 or a M3 and you want the whole dash to work, that when I push my traction control button via the CAN bus system, you can run the whole dashboard. None of the tier one ECUs do that all PID closed loop control on boost, on variable valve timing, on drive by wire. They can run any drive by wire throttle bodies with any pedals, with safeties. Everything I've just mentioned- is confusing me. It's confusing you, but none of the people watching this video can argue that any one of the ECUs that I left in tier one can do any well, of but, these but, no, no, I need to stop you there. What ECU is at the lower end of tier one, and that's usually based on cost, yes. and what ECU is on the top end of tier one, which is usually based on cost and extra features as it compares to the cheapest ECU at the bottom of tier one. Now we're gonna move on to tier one only. If there's a huge outpouring and calling again, then we can explain more about tier two ECUs, what we call referred to as tier two ECUs. But within the tier one ECU, it is usually based on price because any development costs money. A dictator, for example, has been the stalwart of South African racing and tuning for many, many years. It's the ECUs that they started out with. So there was GoTech, they are no longer. There was Mr. Turbo made an ECU management system, perfect power. Dictator was out when all of these were out and they're all, some of them have transformed into different names, but as a general rule, a dictator is still there. So you cannot say a dictator is a bad ECU, because it's not. Is it as good, in my opinion, as a Spetronics? Debatable what you're calling good, but does it have the features a Spetronics has? No. So if, I, if we look at the basic dictator that everybody's buying, so they have made now a 3X and a 2X box. They can semi-sequential the injectors. They probably do make a full sequential box. I don't even know. I've never worked on one. The features in there are very, very simple. You've got 
a simple acceleration function. They're doing a lot behind the scenes. You've got a timing map, a fueling map, water temperature correction, air temperature correction, battery voltage correction. You've got one output for VVT or something. It's not pulsed with modulated, it's only on off. Very basic ECU. Please don't misunderstand me. Basic is not bad, but they can make it for very cheap. You can buy a dictator standard for 3,000 odd rand. So if you buy an engine, for 5,000 or 8,000 Rand, like we've always said, two liter golf engine or something, a two E, you stick it into your golf one, you can buy a three and a half thousand Rand management system and you can run the car. And this again breaks down to take all the tears out of it. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? My list of what I want is easy installation. Cost is my biggest factor. I don't have 10, 20,000 Rand for ECU. So give me a cheap ECU that is reliable, that has backup, that is easy to install, won't cost an arm and a leg to pay someone to connect eight wires, six wires, and is reliable to drive to Joburg, and everybody knows how to tune it. Dictate is your ECU. Okay. Tuners are very fickle, and rightly so. How much can you actually do in an hour and a half or two hours on a car? How much can you do? And that relates to 1,000 to 2,000 Rand in money. So if I, if I told you a list of what a Haltech ECU could do, it would take me 10 minutes just to tell you what it can do. You spend hours and hours, there's 200 hours in my own car, you know, uh, setting everything up. So how do you offer that to a customer? So a simple ECU, car comes in, like on a dictator, to be fair, I cannot spend longer than an hour because there's setup time and then there's the dyno tune. There's only two graphs I have to solve for and then a cold start. There's no other features. Like what else do you want me to do? So if we go to a Blue Arc, for example, which in my opinion is on the other side of the tier, Blue Arc is based in Johannesburg. Phone a dyno tuner in Cape Town who will tune a Blue Arc. They're all gonna say to you, no, I don't know these, you know, I'm not gonna tune it. They've got pulse width modulated boost control. They can do certain variable valve timings with their pulse width modulated output. They allow you to change the frequency of the output. It sounds to me like Blue Arc is a tier two ECU. No, because like I said, there is, there is massive development costs involved in CAN bus. It's big. That's what she said. <laughs> so in other words, there's a difference between closed loop boost control where the ECU has got a target to hit and it's allowed to control the controller to try and hit its target and it keeps on hitting its target. So Blue Arc doesn't have that. They've got pulse width modulated out, whereas a tier two ECU has got speed inputs from the car, which you're now using for traction control to control the drive by wire. You're using those speed inputs to do boost per speed, boost per gear. So now Blue Arc can do boost per gear, but you're using a clutch switch input. So when you stop, it tells it, you need to tell it, this is first. Every time you push the clutch, it goes, this is second, this is third, this is fourth. But it doesn't know how fast you're going. I spoke to Chris and there's, there's, he said there is a way to try to do it with speed, but it's, it's not a closed loop boost target. In so other words, you flex fuel, so, sorry, just so flex fuel, for example, where I've spoken on our car, when I put some ethanol in, the boost goes up to a target. It's got knock control, checking if it's pinging. Then what happens is the boost changes, the timing changes, the fueling changes. The minute we put pump petrol in, the boost comes down, the timing comes down, the, the, the um, fueling changes with a, what they call a volumetric efficiency table. That's a calculation inside the ECU. And the tier one ECUs are just using millisecond based timing tables, which can work, but you can't just take a, a, a Blue Arc ECU or a Spetronics or a Dictator, have the tune on the car, change the injector and just tell the ECU, I've gone from a 550 to a 450 and the tune is right. So you so have to retune it. You've spoken to the owner of Blue Arc. Yes. And how did that conversation go? There's always the problem with these kinds of things. The pe there's there's mis misunderstanding. In other words, like I said, they all going, how can you compare us to a dictator? This is what the guys on the net are saying. And I'm saying, I never compared you to a dictator. I just said you weren't a health tech. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what I said. And Chris will be, yeah, we're not a health tech. We haven't developed that far yet. And I'm like, absolutely, but so we, we agree. So, the, so there was no, and, but the, the problem is that the keyboard warriors, they think 
exactly what you just said now. But, but if they can do injection timing, which they can, so they've got multiple spark displacement, like an MSD. They've, they've got, as one of the comments said, they've got customer added features. So there's people in South Africa that have asked, can you do multiple spark? And Chris was like, I'm sure we can. And he did it. Uh, you know, they ask, can we have a boost controller? And he's like, yeah, we can give you a pulse with modulated out. And we know there's different frequencies. So we, we allow you from zero to 400 hertz. That is a step up from his Spetronics because his Spetronics says, yes, we'll give you an output to switch something on the cam control. So you can, I'll say now why a Spetronics is also a nice ECU. This car's got a Spetronics in it. Yeah, there's a Spetronics in that car. What would a top level tier one ECU need to do to jump into tier two? All of them have benefits, but the more you pay, the more you get. But the jump from a tier one to a tier two in the development side, so in my opinion, a tier two ECU must be volumetric efficiency based. You must have the option to do that. Once you've tuned the whole car, you can just change one aspect of it and you don't have to solve for the fuel table anymore. What Blue Arc has got that's very nice is they can do, they've got a auto tuning function. You can tune your fueling table by just driving around. Jesus! Woo! Quick pass! Now, Dictator can't do that. Spetronics can't do that. You actually have to tune it on a dyno or tune it with an air-fuel ratio on the road. This one, you just drive the car and it tunes the table for you. Like, that's a massive step. But that's you know? tier two, isn't it? No because you're tuning this table and anything you change on the car, you must retune that table. I'm saying a tier two ECU, once you've solved for the VE table, that's it. Unless you change the pumping efficiency of the engine, the volumetric efficiency of the engine. So if you change the camshaft or something like that, you would then re just, but all you do is you just switch what they call a long-term fuel trim on and it fixes itself. You never you have to go to the dyno again. Max ECU does that. Max ECU does that.